Mic check one two. Mic check one two. All right, let's do this. Hey guys, uh, good afternoon to people in the Midwest. Good afternoon to people on the East Coast, and good morning to people on the West Coast, and good whatever to everywhere else around the world. How's it going, guys? This is TNT Joe Fi Tech News that Jerome Ortega finds interesting. This is episode. I don't know. <laughs> This is day number whatever it is in quarantine. Happy May, guys. Uh, today is May 1st. I don't know where April went. I don't, I've just been stuck in this place for the entire month of April. Um, sorry, I'm I'm starting a little late today. It's just, it's I was actually looking at my schedule and I, I have been live streaming this entire month uh, two times a day for the last for the entire month. So I stream for this and then I stream with my news team and uh, I've been doing that straight for the entire month. I also stream Sundays once uh, it's just and then I have my other channel and then I have my photography gig and it's just it's been a very busy month. But uh, I'm glad that you guys are here. Um, let me go through chat real quick. I see uh, Brian here. What up, everyone? What up, Brian? How's it going, man? Uh, happy May. Welcome to the stream. Mint Arcade. Uh, good witching hour. <laughs> Mint Arcade. How's it going, man? I got your DMs. I I, I don't know if you saw. I'm going to go over some of the articles that you sent today. So thank you for that. Uh, I see Hackney Man in here, too. Hey. Hey, Hackney Man. How's it going, man? Welcome to the stream. Nice seeing you. Uh, Tyler in here, too. It does. Uh, what did I say that you said it does for? <laughs> I already forgot. Tyler, welcome to the stream. Glad you could make it. Uh, I think this is the first time I'm seeing you in stream here. I've seen your name, though, before, I think in comments, right? Am I right in saying that? I forget. Um, yeah, it's May already. Yeah, it flew by, Tyler, for sure. It did. It did. Uh, what news team I work for? Uh, I work for um, 
a progressive news team. Uh, it's very political. So it's not something that I talk about much here. Um, but yeah, I stream with them uh, Monday through Fridays at 6 p.m. Central, 5 p.m. Central. We just changed the times. But uh, this actually might be the last month I do it. Um, today might be the, not the last, I mean, I'm still going to be working with them, but they're going back to the studio and I'm still not comfortable with going back to the studio yet. Uh, so, but yeah, um, if you ever want details on that, I'll, I'll share that with you later. We don't have to talk about that now. So, um, Hacking Man says, dude, I bought a used Pixel 4 XL. It's locked to Verizon. We don't have Verizon. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, it's not that it's not even variety. It's just the fact that they use proprietary CDMA um, or proprietary whatever bands they use. Um, that sucks, man. <laughs> yeah, you got to get the world phones. That's why that's why I don't use Verizon. Um, I don't use Sprint. I, I like using world phones. I like knowing that my phone can be used anywhere around the world. That sucks, though. Hopefully you find a better deal. I'm sure you will. Uh, Levin says, hello, people. Hey, Levin, welcome to the stream. Glad you can make it. Uh, Thanks for stopping by. Uh, it's been a while. My, no, don't don't worry. I mean, we all have our own things we got to do. So, you know, do what you got to do, man. It's just nice seeing you. I'm, I'm glad to see you. Uh, one C2 Creative. <laughs> hey, I think I said that right. Uh, hi, everyone. Hi, Jerome. Hey, how's it going, man? Welcome to the stream. I uh, haven't seen you in a bit. I'm um, glad you could make it. Glad you could make it. Brian with a $2 uh, super chat. Brian, thank you, man. Grocery shopping. Have a great stream. Thanks, Brian. Um, good luck with grocery shopping. I know how it is there in New York, man. So uh, be safe. Be careful. Uh, thank you for the super chat. Thank you so much. You know how, how much that means to me, man. Uh, Brian is probably on a 30-day um, <laughs> consecutive uh, super chat streak. So thank you so much, Brian. Thanks again. Um, you know, if you make it back here, just let us know. So uh, thanks again. I see Y 2019. Hi. Hey, Y. How's it going? How you doing? Okay, guys, let's, uh, let's kind of get started. Let's start talking about some tech stuff. If you guys haven't already, I, um, oh, sorry. There we go. I put a new video out yesterday doing video, uh, Hold on here. I'll play it as as I talk. Um, yesterday, I put a new video out um, talking about uh, God. Why am I having a? Sorry, it's just there things running through my head. I put a video out yesterday comparing video quality for the iPhone SE and the Pixel Four, testing audio out. Uh, if you guys haven't checked it, feel free to check it out on um, on my channel. I just posted it last night. I was up late working on that. Um, yeah, I was pretty, pretty impressed with the iPhone still in terms of video audio is really good. It's, it's kind of what I expected. Pixel four is no slouch though. When I tested video stabilization, the iPhone SE did a lot, uh, worse than the pixel four in video stabilization, but this is just like, uh, my very first foray into it. If you could see here, it was overcast and it's been raining. Today is the first sunny day here in Chicago. So like, I'm excited to be able to actually go out, take photos, take videos with blue skies, test it out like in sunny conditions. So I'm excited to do that with my pixel four with my iPhone SE. So I'll, I'll be doing that. But if you guys haven't had a chance, take a look at the video. Um, I kind of go in depth of, with that. If you guys haven't already, I have previous videos already where I've been testing the camera, uh, mostly overcast shots, but testing portrait shots as well. And then uh, doing some indoor lighting and some uh, night shooting. So there's indoor and whatever in here too. It's just, you know, uh, anyway, you guys, when you have a free chance, you know, feel free to check it out. So all right, let's uh, let's get started here. Let's start talking about um, the OnePlus Z. So we talked about this, I think, the other day on stream, and it looks like they might be coming out with the OnePlus Z this July of 2020. So in the next, God, it's May already. So two months. In the next two months, there might be a launch of the OnePlus Z. I have been pretty my feelings on OnePlus has always been positive, but the OnePlus 8 and the OnePlus 8 Pro has been in, in, in a way for me disappointing, not because of the hardware, not because of what OnePlus is good at doing, but because of the price. I feel like their prices have skyrocket isn't the word for it, but they've significantly been going up every new release, the price has been going up. And so now they've been talking about this OnePlus Z and 
I mean, I'm I'm skeptical because, you know, I wish that OnePlus would just give us a good quote flagship killer phone without really bumping up the price the way it has. And now they're releasing this OnePlus Z, which I'm excited for, but I'm also a little weary about because what are they going to be skimping on? Because now it's not going to be that much of a flagship killer. And I started reading reports that it might be coming out with a Snapdragon chipset instead. Instead of the Dimensity uh, 1000 chipset that was originally being talked about, which my chat had started saying that that specific Dimensity chipset is supposed to be a high-end one, supposed to be outperforming or on par with the Snapdragon 855 Plus, which I would be thrilled about. If it can give you that kind of performance, I'll take that if you can give it to us at a really good price. But let's, uh, let's kind of talk. I have two articles here. The second one talks about the chipset maybe switching on us, but I haven't read any of these yet. So let's get into it. This article from Slash Gear is talking about uh, a return to a basic design. If not for its price tag, there would, again, price tag, there would probably be little doubt that the OnePlus 8 or better yet, the OnePlus 8 Pro is this year's Android smartphone to beat. Granted, there's still a lot less than the competition. I don't think they're that much less. I don't know, $700 for a OnePlus 8 that still doesn't have everything you need. And then a one a one plus eight pro for nine hundred dollars because we just talked about this yesterday or the other day the one plus eight still has the same camera hardware optics as the one plus seven t so why am i paying all this extra money for a one plus eight because it has a bigger battery because it has you know a slightly better chipset 5g like i don't care about 5g it's not ready yet and that extra 200 bucks because you can get a one plus seven T right now for 499. This is going for 699. And then if you want the one plus eight pro with the better camera, then you're talking about uh 899. So yeah, that it's just, it's way too much. So granted there's still a lot less, uh, but dangerously, but dangerously close to climbing to the point of no return. Yeah. I don't know if that return is coming. Maybe it is. I've been talking about how the iPhone SE has kind of maybe, you know, maybe they're starting to set a trend with getting the prices back down. We did, or I talked about a leak yesterday about the iPhone 12, maybe coming in at $649 with an OLED screen. So that's also bringing the price down. You Usually if there's a trend that follows, it's usually Apple that bucks that trend. And then other, other competitors are down the line there too. I'm not, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to, um, I'm not trying to to get on my knees for Apple here. I'm not I'm not giving them the benefit of the doubt. I'm just being honest. A lot of times people follow Apple's trend, whether it be design or whether it be their pricing model or their marketing strategy. I mean, a lot of people follow that path. Not everybody does and everybody does it a different way and I'm not trying to say here this is not a apples to apples conversation. I'm just saying that <laughs> I'll get off of that. Just you know what I'm saying. So uh, OnePlus fans who want something less burdensome on the wallet will either have to opt for last year's model, which is what I've been saying, or if they can still wait, see if the OnePlus Z is anything close to what leaks uh, have been claiming it would be. So uh, that, that's a fair point too, is maybe it's time to just wait it out. Wait for July, 2020, see what this OnePlus Z is gonna offer. There's also the Pixel 4a. I have the iPhone SE and I think it's a great phone so far, great performance, great camera from what I've been testing. The battery life is <laughs> the battery life is pretty blah. It's meh. It's I don't even know if I would call it average. Um it teeters between average and below average, I think. At least for me. Uh maybe it depends on how often or how heavy-handed you are with your phones, but uh, the battery is not something to brag about on the iPhone SE at all. The OnePlus Z name might sound new, but the phone it refers to isn't. Previously leaked as the OnePlus 8 Lite, the new name was seemingly confirmed by OnePlus's own teaser. Given what it launched as the OnePlus X nearly five years ago, the OnePlus Z's alleged features might not be so surprising. OnePlus's budget model is expected to sport specs hailing from the year prior, eight gigs of RAM. I'd love that. Uh, a 4,000 milliamp hour battery, 
also good. The one exception to that rule is the MediaTek Dimensity 1000L, the company's somewhat controversial 5G chip that launched only a few months back. The OnePlus Z will also bear a screen from the previous generation, but with one key difference. A new photo of an alleged actual OnePlus Z has surfaced. Did it? Wait, did I see this? Oh, I guess it's th this photo. Interesting. Okay. Uh, however, that said, all leaks should be taken with a grain of salt. The above image comes to us from a seemingly accurate source that provided us with the OnePlus 8 Pro hands-on photo. Uh, so it says here, by looking at the image, we can clearly understand that the OnePlus Z is going to be a flat screen display unlike the OnePlus 8 and the OnePlus and OnePlus 8 Pro. I would rather have a flat screen surface than a curved one. Uh, I've I've given you my thoughts on curved displays. Yeah, they might look a little better, but I, I'm i prone to accidental touches. It's something that I would rather not deal with. I Just give me a flat display. I don't really care about the whole curved display thing. Not, not, not to mention the fact that if you break that display or something cracks or whatever, the replacement process for it is probably going to be way more expensive because it's just, I think it's a lot more difficult to replace uh, glass that way. But all right, let's get back to this. Uh, OnePlus' strategy with this mid-range phone might mirror the iPhone SE 2020's own sourcing components that are already widely available since last year in order to keep costs and prices down. Its timing, however, could be a bit off. OnePlus suggests this phone could launch in July, which takes it close to a OnePlus 8T launch. Okay, so let's uh, let's go into this, uh, not this one. This other article here from Android Authority is talking about... Um, the OnePlus Z possibly having a Snapdragon chipset in there instead, instead of this MediaTek Dimensity one that I guess has been being, that's been touted around for a bit now. I mean, this is the first time I've heard anybody talking about a Snapdragon chipset going in here. Um, so I, I, I did read a little of it, I think. A snippet, but one of the oft repeated rumors we've heard about the OnePlus Z is that it's supposedly equipped with a MediaTek 5G chipset. Sorry, let me make the screen a little bigger. Oh, Jesus, that's not what I wanted. Um, that didn't even look like it got bigger, did it? Okay. Uh, now, a new leak has just contradicted those claims. Frequent leaker Max J has tweeted an image purportedly showing the OnePlus Z with a Snapdragon 765 Series 5G processor. Is this what everyone's doing right now? Everyone's going to throw a Snapdragon 765 in here? I need to see how one of these performs because I have no idea how well this is going to perform. So now the Pixel 4, or the Pixel 5, supposedly a Snapdragon 765. Now, this OnePlus Z, a Snapdragon 765. What else has the 765? Is it the Galaxy A71? 51? 71? I forget now. But um, it looks like, oh, the LG Velvet, a Snapdragon 765. We're going to talk about that a little later as well. I just, I think a lot of people are banking on this. I just don't know how well it's going to perform. I think uh, if... We did, I, I swear chat was talking about this 765 uh, chipset and the 855, the Snapdragon 855 still outperforms it. Um, something that we've talked about as well is that uh, I think a lot of us would have rather had a Snapdragon 855 over like a one-year-old Snapdragon 855 or an 855 plus over a Snapdragon 765. The only reason you're seeing the Snapdragon the only reason you're seeing the Snapdragon 765 being used everywhere is because, you know, the companies don't want to use Snapdragon 865 because it's too expensive. But then the 765 offers 5G and they want to use 5G because they want to market 5G because 5G is supposedly the greatest thing right now. And it isn't. It isn't. Uh, the tips are it. it it will be later on, but right now it isn't. The tipster has previously tweeted a similar image regarding the phone's supposed launch date. Check out the latest image below. So yeah, I I don't know. This is this is the leak. Is this picture? Um, <laughs> it's not. It's not the best looking picture for a leak. Uh, this would be a major departure from previous claims by fellow leaker Ishan Agarwal, who claimed that the phone would arrive with a MediaTek 5G chipset unless, unlike the OnePlus 8 phones, the Taiwanese chip 
The Taiwanese chip maker currently has three 5G chips, namely the upper mid-range Dimensity 800 and the flagship level Dimensity 1000 and Dimensity 1000L. I wonder what the difference between this 1000 and 1000L is. I don't, I don't know. Uh, this wouldn't be the first time we hear about OEMs potentially jumping from MediaTek 5G Silicon to Qualcomm, though. Earlier this year, respected analyst Ming-Chi Ku uh, reported that Qualcomm had cut the price of its Snapdragon 765 series, undercutting the Dimensity 1000 range. Okay, so if they did that, that's great. But how how much better is this Dimensity 1000 over the 765? The report mentions that several OEMs were expected to shift millions of orders from MediaTek to Qualcomm as a result of the price cut. Well, that's kind of kicking the balls for, for MediaTek if that's what's happening. Now, I, I don't know if this is, you know... I mean, who knows what's happening with, with this OnePlus Z phone right now. I, I just want them to put a good chipset in there and give us a good price. I mean, I, I don't know how much this chipset's going to make a difference. I mean, I want to see at least six gigs of RAM. Eight gigs would be great from OnePlus since OnePlus likes to really up those numbers in there, give us 128 gigs of storage and just give us a good phone at a good price. My, my, my guess... And, and I said this the other day, my guess is they're going to price this phone at 379 to compete with the OnePlus SE. Why do I always say that? To compete with the iPhone SE, to compete with the Pixel 4a. But uh, I think I had people in chat who were saying this might be more of a $499 price point, which I can understand. If, um, if the OnePlus 8 is going for 699 and the OnePlus 8 Pro is going for 899, it makes sense that this would go for 499. So $200 tiers, $200 price steps between each model. But I just think they're shooting themselves in the foot if they price it at 499 because then it doesn't compete with, you know, the iPhone SE. It doesn't compete with the Pixel 4a, the Galaxy A51, just anything in that $400 price point. I mean, people still might buy for 500 bucks, but if we're talking 500 bucks, then then what about the OnePlus 7T? I mean, that that should outperform what this OnePlus Z will give you. Um, you know, you're going to have a Snapdragon uh, 800 chipset in there. You're going to have 8 gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage. What is this going to give you? 64 gigs? I just think there might be better deals out there instead. So, okay, guys, let's uh, let me go back into chat here. Let me see what's going on. Um, so Tyler says here, just got an SE and the battery is about the only thing I wish was better. Yeah, uh, I hear you. The, the battery is nothing to brag about at the very least. It's funny because when I when I use my iPhone SE, I think about I'm like, OK, great camera, great performance. It reminds me of my Pixel 4. Great camera. You know, great performance, but the battery is eh. Um but at least, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> so it's still, it's still a really good deal though at three ninety nine, um, compared to when I bought my Pixel Four at eight hundred bucks. Like I felt like I got ripped off really bad, really bad. Uh, Hackney Man says on the plus side, Streets of Rage Four is out on the PS Four. <laughs> Did you see my stream yesterday, Hackney Man? I was talking about Streets of Rage, Streets of Rage Four. I wanted to get it for PC. I haven't, I just haven't had time to even play any games or do anything lately. So um, I'll have to take a look at it. How do you like it? Is it fun? I'm sure it has. Um, Tyler says, uh, um, meantime been, or in the meantime, it's been since your Moto X Pure and Nexus 6P. Yeah, man, those were, those were my early days. Uh, my, before that it was, no, the Moto X Pure was my first phone review, I think. And that was back five years ago, man. Almost five years, I think. Just about five years. So thanks for being a supporter for a while. Uh, and real quick, guys, if you guys haven't already, um, speaking of support, if you guys haven't, please feel free to like the video. Liking the video, I think, helps me in an algorithmic kind of way, helps people find the stream. Uh, if you guys haven't uh, subscribed, feel free to be a subscriber. I do stream Monday through Fridays at 12 p.m. Central. Uh, and then I make separate other higher production videos, usually camera comparison videos. And I have other like plans down the works, but, um, yeah, uh, again, for everybody coming by, appreciate you joining, uh, feel free to say hi in the chat. I like to converse with everybody, like to see what's going on, like to talk about things. So, um, okay. Uh, Y says, what do you think of the Y series of Huawei? Uh, why I, I have no idea. I haven't, I haven't touched Huawei phones in a while. Um, 
I'm not even sure which Y series ones you're talking about. I, I'm not even I'm not even privy to them. If there are certain ones, though, let me know. I'll take a look and see. Um, you know, it's 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 tougher too because since they don't have Google Play um, or Google services on it, it makes it hard for me to even want to get that phone. Not that I want every single Google service um, app or whatever out there, but I I do I am pretty heavily invested in a lot of Google's ecosystem. But um, yeah, I don't know much about it. Do they even sell them in the states? Uh, if they do, I'll definitely take a look. So um, if if you want, feel free to say in the chat, and I'll take a look. Uh, one one C two creative says the iPhone SE at that price point is just amazing. Forget the design, forget the bezels, the screen, the battery. The millions of people who buy it really won't and don't care. Yeah, I. Here's the thing: is when I got my iPhone SE, I have it right here. When when I got my iPhone SE, I was like, okay, yeah, the 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 front of this thing is just so outdated, but at the same time, using it. Is, is still pretty fluid, right? The performance is really good. Uh, the home button is how I remember it. It works great. Um, camera's great. It's just a good overall experience. The build quality, picking it up, the build quality is still really good. The speakers are good. The haptics are good. I don't know. It's, it's, it's really, it's, it's a weird thing because then you, you use it and you're like, man, like there's not much to really complain about it except the battery, at least for me. I mean, yeah, we can, we can bitch about the display and saying that the display is really small and it's not comparable to 2020 and it isn't, it really isn't. I mean, you pick up this phone and you're going to see those bezels. It's going to be like staring you at the face, the home button, you know, the way it is, but it's still not a bad phone. It really isn't. Um, I don't know. It's still, it's still a solid product. I will say that it's still a solid product. Uh, the one plus X was two forty nine at launch. Z will have a huge competition. Will Z will have a huge competition if it's around a possible $500 price point. Yeah. I, I, you know, that's, that's why I think they need to keep it around the $400 price point. That's why I was saying 379 is where they need to price it at. I think that's what I bought my one plus three, four. And I would love to see them just kind of go back to their roots and give us a good solid phone at a solid price. Um, okay. Mint Arcade says if the leak about iPhone 12 is true, one plus will be phased out this year. Oh, you mean if, uh, the iPhone 12 prices at 649 with an OLED display with, you know, their top tier camera. I mean, it's, it's going to be a good phone. I mean, the iPhone 11, the iPhone 11 is already a decent phone. It's, it's still a bit overpriced right at 700 bucks, but you still get a solid phone with one of the best cameras around. I mean, that's why I carry my 11 pro. It's my favorite camera, my favorite camera phone to use, uh, to date to date. Um, Levin says here, a lot of OEMs did the notch after Apple did it. They did. They really did. Uh, Samu Meher. Samu Meher. I don't know. Mer. Samu Meher. Sorry. I'm like trying to think if I'm pronouncing it right. Samu, uh, welcome to the stream, man. I don't think I've seen you here before. I have accidental touches on my one plus six. I won't be able to use the curved display. Yeah, exactly. That's how I feel. I know some there. I think there are people who might be, I know there are people who don't get those issues. They, they say they never have accidental touches. And I mean, I believe them to an extent, but I think there might be a certain percentage that also they're being apologists about it, right? They don't want to admit that they're actually having issues. I don't know. I mean, I can't, I can't say for sure, but it's just, it's a thing that happens. I mean, you know, I see other tech reviewers say the same thing and I, I, I'm not saying all of them are right either. It's just, it's, it's a, in my personal experience, I have issues with it and I don't care for it. I really don't. Um, why well, says Jerome, the Galaxy A71 has the Snapdragon 730 or 730G, depending on the place. I gotcha. Okay. Uh yeah, I I I always I always wanted to try a, a 700 series. Um that 730G is for gaming, right? Or at least supposedly better in, in the gaming space. Um, but yeah, I I I don't know how good the 765 is gonna be. I don't know how much of an improvement the 765 is gonna be over the 730 either. Um, but thank you for clear thank you for clarifying. Appreciate it. Uh, also, what are your predictions for the for prices of the Pixel 5 series in case that they hit? Okay, so I've said this before. Why? Here, here, here's this is this is more of a hope than a prediction. 
because I don't know what Google's doing right now. You know, Google pricing their Pixel 4 at $800 is just, it was an atrocity. I just think that was way too much. And I got a lot of flack for that too. When I first, when that, when that, when that phone first came out and I paid 800 bucks for it and I got it and I used it and I said, this is, this is overpriced. I got a lot of shit for it on Twitter and whatever, or on my YouTube videos. Cause you can look at my old YouTube videos and I was bitching about the price then. Um, but here, here is my prediction or, or my hope of what I want. If the pixel five comes out with a 765 uh, chipset, I, I need them to have cameras in there that will beat the iPhone 11 pro or the iPhone 12. So that's what I want out of it. I want at least six gigs of RAM. I want them to give us the option of uh, a properly priced 128 gigs of storage. Although I know that's probably just gonna be 64 gigs of storage. Um, I don't really care about face unlock, but they're probably gonna throw it in there again. I would rather have a rear fingerprint reader, but who knows? Uh, my my guess is 499. That's my guess. I would love to see it 499 with 128 gigs of storage, but I'm almost positive it's going to be 499 with 64 gigs of internal storage with a 765 chipset with six gigs of RAM and hopefully with better cameras because the the difference on the Pixel 3 cameras and the Pixel 4 cameras it wasn't the biggest difference. It really wasn't. The 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 phone that really made a difference in 2019 was the iPhone 11 Pro. It destroyed, it destroyed the Pixel 4 in night mode. And I have tons of videos that show that. And actually, I plan on redoing those videos again, retesting it, and just solidifying that the iPhone 11 Pro is the superior phone when it comes to uh, night shots for the most part. For portrait shots, the Pixel 4 has it beat at least in in my testing, but I'll retest a lot of that stuff. So we'll see. Um, Hackney Man says here, playing it now and listening to your stream, living the lockdown dream. Yeah, that is, that's the the lockdown dream. It's not a dream that most of us want to have. Uh, Mint Arcade says, Snapdragon 865 Geekbench score uh, reveals single score of 4303 and multi-core of 13344, while MediaTek claimed that its Dimensity chipset has hits multi-score of 12096. So that's pretty comparable. But now what are they going to use, the 765? Hopefully, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't really know. I don't know much about MediaTek, so I don't know how reliable they are. We talked about this before. I don't know how good the support is. People have been saying the support hasn't been the greatest, so who knows? Um, okay. Let me let me scroll down here because I still got a couple. I got a, I got a good amount of stories, but uh, it's kind of a slower news day. It's been kind of a slow news week in in terms of tech, so uh, it's good to just at least go through the chat and talk here. Y says I don't live in the U.S., but I think they may have the 2019 lineup of the Y series, which do have GMS. Well, I'll take a look. I'll take a look. Um, thanks again for sharing. Uh, I see Max uh, Schmidl in here. Max, hey, welcome to the stream, man. Appreciate you stopping by. MediaTek processors will have a Mali GPU which is way inferior to Snapdragon's Adreno GPUs. Thank you for sharing that. That's something I wasn't aware of either. I've heard of that Mali GPU, but yeah, um, I, I wasn't aware. So again, thanks for sharing. And hi, Jerome. Hope you're doing great. Really enjoyed your latest camera comparisons as always. Max, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Um, I, I know I've seen you comment in there before. Um, I haven't had a ton of time lately to comment back to a lot of people just because I've had so much stuff going on. But Max, thank you for being a supporter. Thank you, thank you for being on the stream. Uh, Levin also says the price at launch for the Pixel 4 XL was way too high. This is why I waited to get one. Smart. That's 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 using that's using your head and and using your your wallet correctly. Okay, guys, let's uh, let's move back into the stories here. So actually, I wanted to talk about this. Uh, um, Mint Arcade actually shared this with me. And uh, I I haven't used a Sony phone since like their Xperia whatever compact phone back in the day. Uh, I was really a big supporter of Sony phones back then because I really liked their design. And I was really rooting for them back then, even back when I had Nexus phones because I just, I really like the smaller form factor of Sony. But, uh, and I haven't, then it's been a while since. But Mint Arcade had mentioned that they might start using some of the optics, some of the, um, like some of these features from their mirrorless uh, cameras. And Sony is known, if you look at some of, 
you know, I, I shoot with my DSLR, which is back right there and I love it. And to know that Sony might actually be using some of their components or some of whatever, some of their features for the camera, maybe it'll be a game changer. Maybe it will change the way, um, these images show compared to like what the iPhone 11 pro gives you, what the pixel four gives you. Uh, and, and either way it's good technology, you know, new innovative technology is important to bring out. So I, I haven't read this, uh, mint arcade gave me two stories. So I, I want to go through it. So Sony has designed the Xperia one Mark two to be the smartphone equivalent of its alpha cameras. Indeed, the phone borrows many features and hardware solutions from the company's digital camera dis, uh, division. Sony is sticking with a 12 megapixel resolution this, this year, which I have no issues with. I mean, the iPhone 11 Pro, the Pixel 4, they're both using 12 megapixels. Is the Pixel 4 using 12? I think so. Um, but the large 1 over 1.7 inch main sensor has a 1.8, I keep forgetting what that little term is, pixels and boasts 50% higher sensitivity than the 12 megapixel sensor on the Xperia 1. This will improve low light performance, says Sony, and offers those downscaled camera samples comparing the Xperia 1 Mark II to its predecessor. So is this really, okay, so this is a, wow. So this is, a. I mean, it's a really good looking shot. But again, this is a camera sam sample from Sony. So who knows really how good they are? I mean, they're it's still pretty comparable with this one, but I've never even used the Xperia 1. So I have no idea how good. Um, wow, that's actually really an awful picture compared to this one. But um yeah. Okay. So let's, let's kind of read on here. Data from the whole sensor can be read out in just 10, uh, was that milliseconds? While a 108 megapixel sensor will need 32 for 12 megapixel output and a whopping hundred for a full resolution output. This speed helps to enable 20 frames per second continuous shooting with AE and AF active auto exposure and autofocus active. The sensors dual pixel autofocus and the 3D uh, time of flight sensor help keep track of the subject while the Bions X hardware does 60 AE AF calculations per second. Um, I autofocus is back, which is great, but on the Sony Xperia 1 Mark II, it can lock onto animal eyes as well as human eyes. That's awesome. Eyes aside, the phone uses 247 phase detection points on the image sensor and has and 43,200 points from the time of flight sensor to do its autofocus calculations. The ultra wide and telephoto lenses can also do continuous shooting with it enabled. Speaking of different focal lengths, Sony makes an analogy to changing the lenses on a digital camera when talking about the Xperia 1 Mark, Mark II's triple cam. With digital zoom, the 24 millimeter main lens can be used as a 24 to 70. Okay, the 16 millimeter ultra wide goes from 16 to 35, and its native 70 millimeters goes up to 200 millimeters. This covers the range of focal lengths you would need if you wanted to be prepared for everything. That's great. Um, to handle all the advanced photography tasks, Sony will ship the phone with the Photography Pro app, the still shot counterpart to the Cinema Pro app from the first Xperia 1. So the software is gonna be in here too. I just, I'm curious how good the AI is gonna be on this phone compared to what uh, the iPhone 11 Pro gives you compared to what the Pixel 4 gives you. Now, all that's left is for Sony to actually release the phone according to the latest report. That might happen as soon as next week with Taiwan being its debut market. Um, sorry, I'm looking at the comments here. Yeah, so I, I'm excited for it, but I just, I won't know until the phone really comes out and see how, how well it's going to perform. So, uh, this article, I've never heard of this site before low yet.net, uh, Sony details the Xperia one Mark II's camera technology. Um, so let me, let me just, I'm just going to skim through it real quick. The report added that Sony is aiming to have the camera system on its new flagship phone to be on par with its alpha series of cameras in terms of performance. Therefore, it's unsurprising that the successor to the Xperia one has taken some cues from Sony's camera division, from Sony's camera division in terms of photography features, in terms of photography features and hardware solutions. So it's gonna be the company's first smartphone to feature a Zeiss lens, which are which are prominently included in alpha cameras as well as its high-end Cybershot series. So different hardware, different hardware than what most 
camera phone manufacturers are doing these days. The handset is also the first to use the German brand's T anti-reflective coating technology, which reduces glare and ghosting effects. Um, See, and that's the thing here. Look at that. Uh, it'll maintain a sensor size of 12 megapixels instead of relying on a larger megapixel count, even turning down its own 64 megapixel IMX686 sensor. So it wants to use its own, well, it's using its Zeiss lens. And uh, that said, the 12 megapixel sensor equipped on the Xperia 1 Mark II is definitely no slouch. Um, it, again, it's talking about the the... Uh, the size of the sensor, another factor to why a small, and again, we know that, you know, bigger megapixels don't mean a better camera. Um, yeah, I, I think this is mostly the same kind of info in here. So yeah, I, I don't know when it's going to come out. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I just need to really see how uh, the, the actual camera set or how, how the actual photos turn out. Um, it's probably also going to be really expensive because Sony is good at really pricing their phones at high marks. But if the camera is going to surpass what the iPhone 11 Pro or the Pixel 4 has or the upcoming, you know, Pixel 5 or iPhone 12, um, here, here's the thing. If, if, if there is a phone that has better camera um, results than what I have right now, I would test it out. I would probably spend the money to at least test it out. Um, don't know if I'd keep it, but at least test it out and see if it really competes. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'd be excited to see. So um, we'll see. We'll see. Okay. Um, <laughs> I see here one CT creative says, sounds like another typical Sony, amazing hardware and mediocre results. Yeah. I mean, I, I we, we don't know. We'll see. Um, but you have a point. You really do. Uh, Mint Arcade says here, the other link was a one-to-one -one copy article. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know that. Thank you for sharing that. Why Why is GSM Arena just completely, do they have ties with them? Maybe Maybe it's like a sister company? No, don't, don't worry. You're, you're good. You're good, Mint Arcade. Um, why says, you may not know this, but Poco tweeted something interesting, though it isn't any reveal. More like a wink from Poco to that something is happening soon. I actually have an article about Poco. Maybe I'll go through that next. Um, I've never owned the Poco phones. I know people talked about the F1 and uh, how it was a great deal and a great bargain, but people were, well, I'll, I'll share the Poco F2 after this, actually. Uh, one C. Tureta says, maybe I'm wrong, but didn't Sony Ericsson K800 from 2006 use the, use the Carl Zeiss lens? I, I thought, I swear I've heard uh, Sony using Carl Zeiss lenses before on smartphones, but I could be wrong. Maybe, maybe... I just hear that all the time because Sony uses them. So I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. Mint arcade here says rumored pricing. What is that? Of, uh, 1200 pounds. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't even afford it just to like test it out. Um, my God, Levin says Xperia one Mark two sounds good, but I wonder what their camera software will be like. Cause in the past it hasn't been good. Yeah. I've had, I've had issues using their camera software. It just, it seems really, um, it's, it's really counterintuitive. I think it's not, it's not as straightforward as other camera, uh, apps have on their phones. I mean, maybe it's better, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I so for me on my DSLR, right? Like I don't mind using the settings. There's a ton of settings and I've just, I've been using this, that camera now for the last, what, three years, two years three maybe. And so I'm used to it, but it's, it's a whole learning curve. And what's nice about for me, when I use camera phones, I like the most simple setup. Like I, I deal enough with manual setup on my, um, on my Canon that when I use a smartphone, I just like to point and shoot for the most part. Yeah. I'll mess with a timer here and there, or I'll mess with just like point to autofocus, which isn't really that bad, you know, but otherwise I don't like to mess with any other settings. I really don't. Okay. Let's, uh, let's talk about this Poco phone since, since we're, um, we're on the subject here. So this article from Android central says the Poco F2 pro may be a lot more expensive than you expected. The phone will appear the phone will apparently cost twice as much as its predecessor in Europe. Uh, that is not a good thing. Um, what you need to know, a new leak suggests the Poco F2 Pro could start at 649 euro, uh, seven, $712 US in Europe. The folk, the God, $712. We're talking one plus eight pricing now. Uh, the Poco F2 Pro is rumored. Oh, it's the Pro version, I guess. 
so they're making a pro version now too is rumored to be a rebranded version of the redmi k30 pro for global markets poco f2 series is likely to be officially announced sometime later this quarter a recent rumor had claimed that the redmi k30 pro will soon launch in global markets as the Poco F2 Pro. While Poco has focused only on the Indian market so far, it appears the F2 Pro could be the brand's first phone for global markets. As per a new report from Portuguese website 4G News, the Poco F2 Pro will be nearly as expensive as the OnePlus 8 in Portugal. So let me see what 712 gets you. Um, Snapdragon 865, okay uh 6.67 inch fhd plus so it's not even a quad hd it also has a quad camera array on the back with a 64 megapixel primary sensor oh it has a nice motorized pop-up 12 uh 20 megapixel selfie camera i like that a 4700 milliamp hour battery with 33 watt fast charging so high-end high-end specs right um what might disappoint many Poco fans, however, is that the Redmi K30 Pro only has a 60 hertz display. So, yeah, and it's FHD plus also. Um, hmm. That's it. Oh, I thought it was a little longer than that. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know much. I don't know much about no comments. I just wanted to see if people had anything to say. Yeah, I don't I don't know much about these Poco phones. I don't even know what kind of um, OS it's running on there, but what did the Poco F1 price at? Was that a $300 phone in the US or anywhere? Or was it more than that? I, I don't know anything about it because I never owned one, but uh, yeah. So what would the Poco F2 price at? And what would be different about it then? Would it have a lesser chipset? Um, I, I think the big thing about the Poco F1 was the fact that it just had a really good price and it had a Snapdragon 800 chipset in it, which is great. Like I'll pay, I'll pay 300 bucks for a Snapdragon 800 chipset, but what else did it have? Um, so let me see here real quick. Uh, Min Mint Arcade says, Jerome, why are you not glancing through the spec? Uh, almost official. Wait, which spec? What am I talking about here? Am I missing something? <laughs> I don't, I don't know, Mint Arcade. Um, just, just talk to me in chat. Uh, Why says a four hundred dollar phone with a Snapdragon six sixty five Xperia ten Mark two is too much. I don't even, I don't even, to be honest, I don't even want to mess with the Snapdragon six hundred series phone. I don't, I really don't. Um, Obert, yay! Hey, Obert, welcome to the stream, man. How's it going? Nice to see you again. Morning, mate. Poco F2 Pro is a Redmi rebrand. Where have I heard this strategy before? <laughs> OnePlus and Oppo. Good call, good call. Except I suppose Paco or Paco. Uh, ex except I suppose Poco and Redmi shares Android OS UI. Gotcha. Levin says here, the last Poco phone good at a good price, but it didn't have the bands for the US. Yeah. Um, because Android Stud, if you guys know Android Stud Leo, he 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 was touting that Poco phone for a while, and I don't know he and he lives in the U.S. and he had that phone, but I don't know what bands he was using. I think he had trouble getting any kind of cellular service. I think he was able to get some, but I don't I don't know. Yeah, uh, Y twenty nineteen says F two seems to have a Snapdragon eight fifty five. I'll take an eight fifty five if it's going to be less than that. Um, $700 US price point. Yeah, I'll take an A55. I, I, I want to, yeah, I don't know. I just, I can't see myself spending so much money for a, um, for phones these days. $500 for a phone US is my top, my top end. Uh, and then I say that, and then I'm like, well, maybe except for an iPhone 12 Pro or a Pixel 5. I feel like those are the only two phones I would spend money on. But, um, I don't know yet. I, I probably won't even have the money for it unless I end up getting a full-time job in the near future. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Um, Obert here says bands of the Poco were better suited in majority GSM cellular countries. Yeah. Uh, but I have T-Mobile, so I would assume that I would be capable of using most of the bands, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. So let's, let's move on here. Um, oh, Okay, this is a, just a, I'll go through this real quick. Uh, this article is talking about Xiaomi. We talked about Xiaomi yesterday. Researchers accused Xiaomi web browsers of collecting browsing data, even in incognito mode. That is not good. Um, okay, so Xiaomi smartphones are un, un, unanimously, 
Xiaomi smartphones. Wait. Oh, Xiaomi smartphones are unanimously agreed to be one of the best value purchases available in the market at any point in time, packing some insane hardware at some very lucrative lucrative price points, which is why I kind of wanted to buy a Xiaomi branded phone just because they seem to have really high specs and really lower or they have lower price points, especially at the lower end of the smartphone market. These phones make an offer that a lot of people just can't refuse. Xiaomi has also been receptive to the needs of the developer community with decisions such as allowing bootloader unlocking without sacrificing the manufacturer's warranty. Okay, let's get into the, the dirty here. However, recent reports from security researchers towards a worrying privacy issue observed on Xiaomi's web browsers. On Xiaomi's web browsers. Um, so Xiaomi's various web browsers were sending data to remote servers. They allege that the data being sent included a history of all websites visited, including the URLs, all search engine in, uh, queries, and all the items viewed on Xiaomi's newsfeed, along with device metadata. What's even, what's even worrying about this data collection allegation is that this data is being collected even if you seemingly browse with incognito mode enabled. Um, this data collection seemingly occurs on the pre-installed stock browser on MU, uh, on MIUI, as well as Mi Browser Pro and Mint Browser, both of which are available for download through the Google Play Store. Together, these browsers have over 15 million downloads, while the stock browser is preloaded on all Xiaomi devices. Uh, the devices tested include the Xiaomi Redmi Note 8, Xiaomi Mi A1, Xiaomi Mi 10, Xiaomi Redmi K20, and the Xiaomi Mi Mix 3. Um, there wasn't a distinction between Xiaomi's Android One or Mi UI devices, as the collection code was found in the de in the default browser anyway. So Xiaomi responded by seemingly confirming that the browsing data it was collecting was fully compliant. Here, here's the thing. I mean, whether it's true or not, or Xiaomi is like backpedaling and saying we didn't do anything. Um, I I guess it's one of those things where you, you might have to tell people who own a Xiaomi phone to not use their stock browsers. Uh, maybe download Chrome or put, who knows how secure Chrome is now these days either. I, I have a feeling that it doesn't matter who we're using. People are collecting our data, but um. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's scary to say the least. And uh, even though I do want to buy a Xiaomi based phone one of these days, I want to get one that I can end up modding myself, that I can ROM, uh, so I don't have to use MIUI, that I can use Lineage OS, or I can throw a uh, Pixel Experience on there. Just something that's closer to stock Android. So yeah, just thought I'd share this just a heads up for anyone who owns a Xiaomi phone to maybe kind of if you're using the stock browser don't use the stock browser maybe use something else um okay so let me see here uh okay obert says uh oh we so he went through that already uh android fixture says poco was made by Xiaomi now they are both separate brands oh Okay, good to know. Android Fixer, hey, welcome to the stream. Welcome to the chat. Glad you could stop by. Uh, Tobez is in here too. What up, guys? What up, Tobez? How you doing, man? Glad you could make it. Uh, real quick before I move into the last couple stories here, if you guys haven't already, please feel free to like the video. Liking the video helps me in an algorithmic way, I think. It helps people find the stream, I think. Uh, and, and if anything, it just helps support me. So if you could, I would appreciate it. If you guys are new to the channel and you haven't subscribed, uh, feel free to be a subscriber. I do stream Monday through Fridays, 12 p.m. Central uh, for the foreseeable future. So, okay, let's move on, guys. Um, the next story I have here uh, is... Oh, okay, this is a real short one. I kind of looked and I was like, okay, this is barely anything, but this article from 9to5Google talks about the Google Pixel 4a camera stills leak in early comparison. Uh, so... Yeah, apparently someone leaked 4A pictures. Back in March, the Pixel 4A was extensively revealed in a video hands-on that showed the design and device in action. The people responsible for that footage are now leaking some camera stills captured by the Pixel 4A. The Pixel 4A, which we reported had a 12.2 megapixel primary camera in April, is compared to the Redmi Note 7 by Julio Lusan of Techno Like Plus. Megapixel count does not matter. No, it doesn't. With the latter 48 megapixel sensor paling next to Google's upcoming mid-ranger in the first set of shots. 
shots. Color is noticeably better on the Pixel 4a in both low light and outdoor conditions. The images from Google from the Google phone share the same pixel look as the current generation of devices. So um, these photos will look, oh, okay. I, for some reason, I thought uh, the photo here, see so that looks really soft already at um, at a full crop, um, but doesn't look bad. It's it's too hard because it's just, you know, the photos are, where, where are the comparison ones? I don't see them here. I mean, they're, they're a touch soft, but they're not bad. Um, they are from a prototype Pixel 4a. So the thing I've heard about too is th this came from Twitter and Twitter compresses its video or com Twitter compresses its images. So I don't know how good these photos are in the first place. As we reported, the Pixel 4a will be powered by Qualcomm's Snapdragon 730 with six gigs of RAM and feature the Titan M chip, but no Pixel neural core. There will be a 5.81 inch OLED panel at, at 1080, so FHD. Hole punch front facing 8 megapixel camera storage options could range from 64 to 128, while the 3080 milliamp hour battery has 18 watt fast charging over USB C. So, uh, suggesting a starting price of 399, no larger model with the color options just being black and barely blue. Yeah, uh, not too much to report on that, just these two photos. Yeah, they look decent. Um, I, I, kind of want to get my hands on the Pixel 4a because I think that's going to be a pretty good phone at the price. I think really the best comparison there is the Pixel 4a versus the iPhone SE and see how well those two compare against each other. I mean, I've been testing my Pixel 4 versus the iPhone SE and uh, the iPhone SE is pretty close. Um, you know, <laughs> the fact that the Pixel 4 can be had right now at $499 is a much better price point. I feel like that's a much fairer price point. Um, but yeah, the Pixel 4a will be a better, you know, head to head since they're going to be 400 bucks each. Google really needs to figure out what they're doing with their pricing on their phones and what they're doing. Um, I, I've said this stream after stream. I just I, I, I need them to get their shit together. I really do. Uh, <laughs> Why says here Google needs to do something about their leaks. Yeah, they do. I, I don't know if they're purposely leaking stuff out at this point or whatever, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, unless they want it that way. Yeah, who knows? Who knows at this point? I, I have no idea. All right, so let's talk about the LG Velvet. It looks like these photos got leaked, spotted online. Um, I mean, it looks pretty much what we've been seeing in the, the teaser videos and all that kind of stuff. Um, it looks like a pretty nice phone. I do like this white color. Uh, you know, it's also going to be, they, they, I think they keep touting it as, as a higher end phone, but it's going to have a 765 chipset in there. Again, the same chipset that you're going to find in the Pixel 5. Um, this is the LG Velvet. No doubt LG is excited when it comes to the new phone that boasts a 3D arc design and a raindrop camera module. I mean, it does look nice but I don't think it's anything like groundbreaking or anything like that. It'll be released next month. And we shared with you when exactly May 15th, the phone will support the plus dual screen accessory, according to some images and a spec sheet that serviced online. The LG velvet has been teased several times. So it's only a matter of time before we see the new Android phone from the other South Korean tech giant. The phone comes in black and white with a shiny finish. Uh, a photo of the insides of the LG velvet is also included. So we have an idea how the company laid out components. So a 4,000 milliamp hour battery, uh, a speaker grill, USB type C charging, three and a half millimeter headphone jack. So again, it's gonna have great audio uh, hardware in it, just like LG has in the past, a mid range 5G modem processor, which is the Snapdragon 765, eight gigs of RAM, 16 megapixel uh, front camera, a 48 megapixel rear with an eight megapixel wide, has optical image stabilization, micro SD slot, uh, AI sound, IP68, on-screen fingerprint sensor, and wireless charging. So yeah, it's going to come packed with a good amount of stuff. But again, I don't know how well the 765 chipset's going to be. I also don't know what price point this is going to be. Like, what what is what is the good price point for this LG Velvet? Probably 500 bucks. Kind of what I'm guessing the Pixel 5 is going to be at. But if it's going to be 500 bucks, is the camera hardware going to be as good, or the camera you know, camera hardware, the image processing, is it going to be as good as the Pixel 5? I don't know. 
But if it's 128 gigs of storage at a $500 price point, maybe then Google for the Pixel 5, they'll release that for 500 bucks too at 128 gigs of storage. That would make me happy in terms of the Pixel 5, but I don't know. I, I, I don't know who's really in, in line for the new LG phone. I also worry about the UI. I don't know how good that UI is gonna be. So yeah, uh, let's see here. Levin says the key for LG is how are they going to market this phone because their marketing hasn't been good at all. That's what I hear all the time. LG doesn't have the greatest marketing. Um, but if LG produces a really good solid phone, I mean, I couldn't care less about the marketing. Like I'll go ahead and I'll support that phone and I'll give it a good review if it's a good phone. But yeah, I mean, marketing plays a big factor. I mean, that's how people hear about it. That's how people, you know, get hyped up about it too. But look at Samsung with their S20. Their, their Ultra phone, um, they have tons of marketing and they're getting shit for a lot of their bad calls on pricing, their issues with autofocus. But yeah, uh, I, I hear you though, Levin. It makes a lot of sense. It really does. Why it says here, the A-series should be the stay uh, being the mid-ranger. Uh, also says Google should do a low end with the same camera with like a Snapdragon 460 to do a competitive low end. Yeah, what, like 200 bucks then? Is that what you mean? Um, that would be crazy. Also, I can't imagine using a Snapdragon 400 uh, chipset. Um, but I guess that's what Android Go is for, right? To use the lower end stuff. Uh, okay, guys. So like I'm running, I'm rounding out the hour here. I do have three more stories, but I'm not going to go through all of them right now. I'm just going to kind of close it out here. So I have this article from GSM Arena talking about Maizu. Am I saying that right? Meizu, Maizu teases the 17 Pro with 129 degree ultra wide cam and next gen speakers. I know nothing about this. I know nothing about this brand either. This is another brand that has come up that I just am unfamiliar with. It seems like Maizu is pretty generous with information surrounding the upcoming Maizu 17 series lately. As the company shares two more teasers, one claims that the pro version would have a 129 degree ultra wide camera. And the other one is all about the great sounding stereo loudspeakers. If there's anything that I love, it's, it's good front facing um, front firing stereo speakers. If the transition and the teaser itself is accurate, this could mean the Maizu 17 Pro would sport one of the wild, widest ultra wide cameras on the market, if not the widest. Additionally, the lens will be paired with a 32 megapixel sensor, and we assume it does four to one pixel binning. Um, the second and most recent teaser says the Maizu 17, probably the 17 Pro as well, will boast third generation dual ultra linear stereo speakers. I don't know what that means. Those of you who are familiar with audio tech, you'd probably know that this means, here we go, maximum output with minimal distortion. That's great. Um, okay, so when they say that, okay, I got it. In most cases that is. Then again, we could have been easily lost in translation and Maizu was referring to something else entirely. In any case, the flagship duo is expected to arrive on May 8th. So we still have about a week to go before we learn more about the speakers and the ultra wide camera. Can I even, no, this phone isn't even available for the US. It just looks like it's, uh, what is it, China? I mean, it says here in Chinese, I'm assuming China. But um, yeah, I I don't know, just something I thought I'd share. Again, a slower tech, a slower tech day, slower tech week in general, but uh, it is what it is. So uh, yeah, guys, I think that is about it. I think that's all I got for you. Uh, Real quick, I do want to thank everybody, especially this week, for everybody who's come into the stream, who's joined in the chat, who's engaged. Uh, appreciate it, guys. It means a lot to me for all the new faces. Um, appreciate you guys coming in too and just being part of uh, the chat, talking with me, going through stuff. And again, for anybody who hasn't, uh, please feel free to like the video. I do have some uh, other camera comparison videos that I put out earlier this week. I'm still working on a couple more. Um, I, I need a break soon because I've just been working like nonstop. But uh, I do want to thank everybody again. Uh, it's 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 been great doing this. I love doing it. Love chatting with you guys. And uh, right? Is today Friday? Yeah, today's Friday. I had to double check. It's May 1st. May 1st. So um, 
I will see you guys on Monday. I should have a video out sometime during the week though, or sometime during the weekend, I think showing more camera comparisons and we'll go into that and we'll talk about it on Monday. But otherwise guys, thank you so much. Thank you again. Thank you for everybody. Um, who's supporting me. Thank you for the super chats. It means a lot to me. And uh, that's it. I'll leave it there. Here's the outro music. I will see you guys on Monday. Have a good one, guys. Take care. Thank you.